engineers work in the real world. Civil engineers uh, design the buildings and bridges. But it turns out that some of the computations that engineers do can uh, make use of uh, complex numbers. And uh, we'll see that in the differential equations course, that to solve certain equations, the, to find the real solution, the easiest path is to go through the uh, complex number space. So in this video, I want to teach you the basics of uh, complex numbers that you'll need, say, in a differential equations course. What is a uh, imaginary number? or the imaginary unit. The imaginary unit, we call that i. It's the number that when you square it, you get minus 1. So in fact, there are two numbers that you, when you square it, you get minus 1. That's i and minus i. Um, and in a real expression, when you use complex numbers, typically you'll end up with solutions that contain both i and minus i. OK, so symbolically, we just write i is equal to the square root of minus 1. That just means that i squared is equal to minus 1. And then we represent a complex number z as a real number i plus i times a complex, uh, real number y. So x and y are real, and i is our imaginary unit here. Um, there are functions associated with uh, complex numbers that we haven't seen before with real numbers. One of them is called the complex conjugate. Uh, we write that as z bar. That's equal to x minus i y. That's called the uh, complex conjugate. Complex conjugate. Um, all you do is in an expression with uh, real numbers and i, you form the complex conjugate by changing i to minus i. Um, there's two other functions. There's the real part of z. That's equal to x, the part of z that doesn't have i in it. So x is the real part of z. You see, you can uh, form x using z and z bar. You can uh, add z and z bar, and the i, y cancels, and you end up with 2x. So this is a linear combination of z and z bar. It's equal to z plus z bar divided by 2. Okay, And that's real, and that's the real part of z. The other function, then, is called the imaginary part of z. We write that as I m for imaginary part of z. And that's equal to y, the piece that multiplies i. And then how do you get the imaginary part of z from z and z bar? You can say z minus z bar, so the x is eliminated. So that's z minus z bar. And then you get 2i y, so you have to divide by 2i. OK, um, z and z bar are useful in, in, in uh, one more way. If you multiply them, so if you take z times z bar, that would be x plus i y times x minus i y. So the cross term cancels. So you would get x squared um, minus i y squared. But that simplifies. So when you have an expression and you have an i squared in the expression, i squared becomes minus 1. So here we have an i squared in the expression, and that simplifies to x squared plus y squared, which is the real part of z squared plus the imaginary part of z squared. OK. Um, you can add complex numbers and get a complex number. You can subtract complex numbers. You can multiply complex numbers and get a complex number. In that case, you have to uh, take care that i squared equals minus 1. i cubed then would be minus i. 
i to the fourth would be one, right? So you just use the principle that i squared equals minus one. You can also divide complex numbers. Uh, division of complex numbers requires a trick. So let's say you have a, uh, two complex numbers, um, z and w. If you wanted to divide z by w, the trick you use is that you want the denominator then to become a real number, so you multiply by w bar in the numerator and the denominator. Okay. Um, I think there is one more uh, point here that I should make. So say we have uh, two complex numbers, z and w, and they're equal. Z or z can be a function that has a, is a function of a, that has complex expressions in it. W can be another function with complex expressions. If you have these two uh, objects, z and w, that are equal, this is a complex expression, but very nicely this is equivalent to two real expressions. So z equals w is equivalent to the real part of z equals the real part of w and the imaginary part of z equal to the imaginary part of w. So we'll see that when we study differential equations that um, we may have a, um, a differential equation that we write as a complex differential equation, a differential equation for a complex function, but that's actually equivalent to two differential equations uh, for two real functions, and the real functions would be the real part of the complex function and the imaginary part of the complex function. Okay, um, these are the real fundamentals of uh, complex numbers in terms of their algebra. We have to think about one function, though, that's very important in the uh, differential equations course. That's the uh, exponential function. So let's look at uh, e to the i theta. Okay? So what is uh, this function? So theta is some real angle. But here, i is the square root of negative 1. So we have to define uh, this exponential function in some way. The uh, proper way to de define this is through the Taylor series. The Taylor series, uh, you can show uh, in a math course. The Taylor series is convergent for all uh, arguments here. So we don't have to worry in this course for engineers about convergence, but we can define that through the Taylor series. So if you remember from your calculus course, the Taylor series for the exponential function would be 1 plus i theta plus i theta squared over 2 factorial plus i theta cubed over 3 factorial plus i theta to the fourth over four factorial, et cetera. So that's basically the definition of e to the i theta through the Taylor series. And then we want to write that as a complex number. So that means we want to write that as a real part plus i times an imaginary part. So what is the real part here? One is real. i theta Theta is part of the imaginary part then. i theta squared over 2 factorial, that has an i squared. i squared is minus 1. So we can become, that third term then becomes minus theta squared over 2 factorial. The fourth term has an i cubed. i cubed is i squared times i is minus i. That's part of the imaginary term. And then the fourth term has an i to the fourth. So i to the fourth is minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. So we have a plus theta to the fourth over 4 factorial, etc. So this 
uh, series is the real part of e to the i theta plus i times the imaginary part of e to the i theta. So we have an i times theta. So the first term here is theta. We have an i cubed, which is um, i squared times i is minus i. And then we have a theta cubed over 3 factorial. So we have a theta minus theta cubed over 3 factorial. And then the next term here will be theta to the fifth over 5 factorial, etc. OK, now you have to think back to your calculus course. This is a Taylor series expansion for cosine theta. And the second expression here, series here, is a Taylor series expansion for sine theta. So we have the very important formula here that e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta, a connection between the exponential function and the trigonometric functions. Okay, uh, Extremely useful, and particularly in our differential equations course, we'll be using this all the time. Um, there's a uh, famous formula that comes from this. Um, it's called Euler's uh, identity. If you put theta equal to pi, um, then we have cosine pi equals 1, sine pi equals 0. So um, cosine pi, sorry, cosine pi equals minus 1, sine pi equals 0. So we get e to the i pi equals minus 1. And the famous expression, which maybe you, you'll see on t-shirts, is I'll write it down here, e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. Okay. Um, Euler wrote down this expression for a king, at least this is how the story goes, and said that this proves the existence of God. Why, why is this such a beautiful expression? In one expression, we have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 key numbers of mathematics, the 0, the 1, and the i, and then we have e and pi, the two most important, um, what we say are transcendental numbers. And then we have one addition, we have one multiplication, i times pi, and one exponentiation, e to the i pi. A beautiful expression. Okay, one more point I want to make about these complex numbers. Um, we can put them in what's called the complex plane. We can draw a graph. Um, let me put it here. We can say the x-axis is the real part of z, and the y-axis is the imaginary part of z. And we can put a complex number z so let's put it here. So that's our complex number z, and I can write that as x plus i y, and draw a vector from the origin to that complex number. OK, if you remember your uh, polar coordinates, then uh, we have an angle here, theta. We have a length of this vector, r. OK, what are the polar coordinates uh, of this complex number, we have uh, x equals r cosine theta, and we have y equals r sine theta. And uh, putting it together then, we have z equals x plus i y. We factor out an r. We have cosine theta plus i sine theta. And then we have our wonderful expression, e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. So this becomes r e to the i theta. That's called the polar representation of z. So z we can write as x plus i y, or we can write it as r e to the i theta. r is this length, theta is the angle it makes with the x-axis. 
also uh, very useful in computations. So let me review. Um, we're introducing the imaginary unit here, the number that when you square it, you get minus 1. Symbolically, everyone writes i equals the square root of minus 1. We have a complex number, z, equals a real number plus i times an imaginary number. And then I define a function, which is called the complex conjugate of z. z bar is x minus i y. You just change i to minus i. We have the real part of z is x. The imaginary part of z equals y. We can uh, get the real part of z from a linear um, combination of z and z bar. And we can get the imaginary part of z from a different linear combination. Remember, the real part of z and the imaginary part of z are, two, are both real numbers. If we multiply z and z bar, we also get a real number, which is x squared plus y squared, which is actually r, the length of uh, this uh, complex number in the uh, complex plane. Uh, addition, multiplication, subtraction are straightforward if we use i squared equals minus 1. Division has a trick to do. We uh, make the denominator real by multiplying by its complex conjugate. Uh, often we have a very, uh, we have a complicated complex expression, z equals w, but don't despair. These are just two real equations. The real part of z equals the real part of w, and the imaginary part of z equals the imaginary part of w. Finally, uh, we've defined what it means to be e to the i theta through its Taylor series. And when we do that, we see that e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta, a very useful expression. And uh, our first use is here, where we say that a complex number x plus i y can also be written as r times e to the i theta. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching. And don't be afraid of complex numbers. They're very useful. <laughs>